Today, Intel's 14th Gen CPUs get their first benchmarks, a new NVIDIA GPU that's the world's first. AMD teases their next-gen beast, and your AMD GPU may soon lose support. Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. It's news time and first up for today, we have the first benchmarks for Intel's next-gen 14th Gen CPUs. And as you can see, those benchmarks were done on Crossmark. Now, I will go ahead and say that the actual performance itself doesn't really tell us too much, but I'll get to that in a second. With that said, what it does tell us is some of the specs. For starters, we have the Core i9-14900K, and as you can see, it comes with a total core count of 24 cores and 32 threads. And that basically confirms the rumors that we've been seeing that claims at least the top-end CPUs will not be going up in cores. So 24 cores, just like 13th gen, will remain the maximum amount of cores. With that said, at least a couple CPUs will be going up in core count, like we can see right here with the i7-14700K, which comes with 20 cores and 28 threads. Now, unfortunately, those will apparently be the only ones that are going to see a higher core count. You can see here all the way down to the i3 models, at least according to these leaks and rumors that we've been seeing. The i3 models will remain the same, as well as pretty much everything up to the 900 series except for those 700 series parts and that's actually what we'd already been hearing before these benchmarks so those rumors do look to be correct now moving on to the actual performance itself as you can see right here it says the 14900k appears to be 14 to 20 percent faster than the 14700k across all benchmarks on average and of course that is to be expected given it does have more cores with that said in comparison to the 13900k it actually did worse well both of these cpus did worse so clearly there's more work to be done by intel but with that said, don't forget that the 14900K does have the same amount of cores as the 13900K. And given the rumors are right, these also have the exact same architecture as last gen, so I really wouldn't expect much of a difference in terms of performance either way. Of course, they are planning to up the clocks just a little bit, but that's likely going to be, at least for most of these CPUs, the vast majority of the performance boosts you're going to get. So it definitely won't be too much, but as far as the leaks, it certainly looks like they are correct and next up for today we have a very interesting new nvidia gpu as you can see right here it states gigabyte quietly launched a low profile geforce rtx 4060 graphics card and actually i'm pretty sure this is one of the first if not the first low profile rtx 4000 gpu as you can see right here it's called the geforce rtx 4060 oc low profile 8g and as the name suggests this is in fact a factory overclocked low profile 4060. So it's definitely an interesting GPU and certainly should be one that HTPC builders will find very interesting. But not only is it one of the first RTX 4000 GPUs that's low profile, you can actually see that it has something else interesting. It also comes with three fans, which is pretty odd just because most low profile cards only come with two. And as you can see right here, it is a really tiny GPU. As far as width, it's only 40 millimeters. Then it has a 69 millimeter height and it's 182 millimeters long. Yet with such a small profile, it was still able to put on three fans. With that said, it is not able to get all of its power from the PCI Express slot. So you will in fact need an external PSU to power this GPU more specifically, an 8-pin power connector. When it comes to the I.O., you can see it has two HDMI ports and two display ports. So this bad boy can handle up to four monitors at once. Definitely not bad at all, especially for a low-profile card. Basically, this is one GPU that you should definitely look out for. And speaking of GPUs that you should definitely look out for, AMD recently confirmed their next-gen MI4 series accelerators. For those who don't really keep up with this market, AMD recently announced the MI300 series instinct line of accelerator GPUs. Actually, GPUs and APUs, because they ended up splitting them up into two products, the MI300A and MI300X. The MI300A is actually a beastly APU that comes with multiple GPU modules as well as a monster CPU. 
all in one package. In fact, according to AMD, this was the first, and actually still is, the first ever APU that's made for AI acceleration. So it's definitely an interesting release. Then there's the MI300X, which, as you can see right here, is one absolute monster GPU. We're talking 153 billion transistors, 192 gigabytes of HBM3 memory. It comes with multiple, it actually comes with eight GPU modules all in one. So think of it like eight GPUs packed together into one beast. Well, AMD has already confirmed their next monster. As you can see right here, during the company's Q2 earnings call, their CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, stated, quote, when you look across those workloads and the investments that we're making, not just today, but going forward with our next generation MI400 series and so on and so forth, we definitely believe that we have a very competitive and capable hardware roadmap. Basically, AMD isn't done with their beastly accelerators. And what's wild is that this was shortly after we saw some rumors basically claiming that AMD was going to be done with the high-end GPUs with their RX 8000, effectively doing what they did with their Polaris GPUs and only releasing more mid-range parts in the gaming segment. Now, obviously, this is for accelerators, so it is a completely different market. I certainly wouldn't put it past AMD to release an MI400, but not release something like, say, an 8900 XTX, 8900 XT, things like that. Simply put, the two markets are very different. They look for different things, and definitely whenever it comes to, say, the MI400, AMD is poised to make some really good stuff just because they can actually combine multiple GPUs into one, and at least so far, it looks like they're having a really hard time doing that for gaming. These are obviously different applications and having everything perfectly parallel to where Windows looks at it as one GPU is clearly turning out to be a very difficult task. But in the AI market, that really isn't an issue. Either way, this is definitely looking like a very interesting release. And lastly for today, I have some very bad news for anyone who currently owns one of AMD's older GPUs more specifically Polaris or Vega. This story comes from a new video by Red Gaming Tech where he actually also seemed to confirm that AMD is killing off their high-end RDNA 4 GPUs to which, as I said in that video, I will really quickly reiterate that what AMD did do with Polaris was actually really impressive. I love their RX 480 really amazing value proposition for a card, but the simple fact is that they did not challenge NVIDIA in the high end. And of course, we do like to see that just because it helps to keep prices down. Regardless, the big news here is really on AMD's drivers. According to Red Gaming Tech, AMD is having some pretty major issues with things like FSR 3.0. Of course, AMD originally announced FSR 3.0 late last year, and they said that it was coming this year but we really haven't heard about anything since. Not only that, but AMD actually missed the deadline for their Hyper RX launch not too long ago. So clearly AMD is having some major issues when it comes to their drivers. And that's why this leak actually makes a lot of sense. According to Red Gaming Tech, AMD is apparently planning to end support for Polaris and Vega GPUs, apparently including integrated GPUs. So if you have an RX 480, 580, Vega GPUs, unfortunately, at least if this is right, AMD is gonna be ending support for your cards. And of course, I definitely know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, but GamerMel, those are really old GPUs. And I definitely get that. We can't expect AMD to support these forever, but, Keep in mind that even AMD's Ryzen 5000G desktop APUs, which is actually their most recent APUs, use a Vega integrated GPU. So if this is right, it could mean that AMD will even in support for those. Now, given the fact that those are so new, hopefully AMD will kind of pick and choose exactly which GPUs they support and which they don't. Instead of just going no Vega whatsoever, no Polaris, hopefully they will do something like still support, say, the 5700G and 5600G, but at least for now, it sounds like there's a chance that all of those older GPUs will lose support. With that said, one of the reasons why I'm mentioning this now is that if you do own one of those and you have a problem with it, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe AMD will see this and go, okay, there's a lot of people that will not be happy with that, so we're not going to do it because obviously it's not too late given they haven't officially announced it. 
So while that does it for today, once again, let me know what you think about AMD potentially ending Polaris and Vega GPU support. Do you currently have a Vega or Polaris GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.